Now in our finer task, task number four, down bit and domain tag, here we need to investigate how a down bit and domain tag are used to prevent routes from being advertised back to MPLS when it learns from MPLS. And this is this specifically for our site number three, since our site number three is do home. And we can just basically try to track that down using our 8800-24, which is our RH loopback 10. Okay, so let's take a look at that first. Before we start jumping to the router, let's go through the concept of the down bit real quick. So for any routes that's being redistributed from a BGP to OSPF, each of these routes will have a down bit set. And for the route that has the down bit set, the router, the next time it sees that route, it would not advertise it back to BGP. So for example, the route coming in through R4, redistributed to OSPF, has a down bit set, and somehow the switch one advertise that route back to R2. The R2 will see hey, that route already has the down bit set. I'm not going to redistribute that back and re-advertise it into the MPLS. Since they're not desirable anyway, and it's just going to make the site become a transit site or even worse, potentially cause a routing loops. So let's go ahead and take a look at that on the router. On switch one, if you do right now show IP route OSPF, you can see currently since it's dual home, it's learning every single routes from both VLAN 102 and 104. Okay, now if you do show IP OSPF database, and we can look at the summary route since, as you've seen in the previous task, that any routes that's been advertised into the sites, into OSPF, by default, they are type summary or the inter-area routes. Okay, so we're gonna particularly look at 8800. And you can see that how both of these routes in the OSPF database has a mark of downwards, and those are an indicator of a down bit. Obviously, both of these routes have been redistributed from BGP to OSPF has the down bit set. Now for the domain tag, so the down bit only works with internal or summary routes. It doesn't really work, or there's no down bit feel for the external routes. This is where the domain tag comes into play. It pretty much does the same function as the down bit. It's just now called a domain tag, which is completely different feel. So just to look at that, actually, let's go back and look and see. You can see that uh, for our external routes, switch one is has a two external route, which is 1101 and 2201 that we advertise as part of our Shamling configuration and that came across as E2. That's because we natively advertise that using BGP and not OSPF. So let's take a look at what that external route looks like on the database. So show IP OSPF database external 1101. And you can see that there's uh, no field or options like what we saw in the summary routes. But instead, if you, let's see if we can find that. Right here, we have an external route tag of these values, and those are basically the domain tag. So the router by default derived those value. And the same thing pretty much happens when it route gets redistributed to SPF, it's been set with the domain tag, and the next time the other router see the domain tag that matches its own domain tag, it would not re-advertise that or redistribute that and re-advertise that into back into MPLS. Okay, so basically the down bit and domain tag serves the same purpose, but it's just for different types of OSPF routes. Okay, so now just to really see that in action, what we're going to do is to shut down the BGP session between R1 and R2, and that way R2 doesn't learn the R8 loopback interface directly from R1, and then this is going to force itself to learn th that route from switch one. So on R2, what you're going to do is router BGP 100, and then for the neighbor, which is R1, you're going to shut that down. And now on the R2, we do show IP route, VRF C1 OSPF. You can see that most of these routes are still there. So for route R6, it's now pointing out fast 0, 0, and that's because R2 is now learning R6 routes through the backdoor link. R7, it's obviously a, it's local CE routers, as well as the switch one, which is 1010 subnet. But there's one route, that's, or a bunch of routes that's missing is that belongs to R8. And let's see why that is the case. So we can do show IP OSPF data, and we can just look for the summary route. 
just like what we did earlier, 8800. Zero, zero. And even though we can see the route for 8800 zero, zero in its OSPF database, it didn't get installed into the routing table. Okay, so one route is being learned through area three, which is this path right here where the switch 10 is kind of re-advertising that route from R4 to R2, and that obviously has the down bit set. So even though R2 learns that route, it doesn't really install that route into its routing table. Okay, that's part of the loop prevention mechanism with the down bit. And also the R2 doesn't really like the route that's learning through the area 24 neither, which is through the backdoor link because R8 advertised to R1 and then R6 learns that from R1 and it advertised it to R7 through the backdoor link and it eventually hits R2, but somehow R2 does not install that route in its routing table. And to really see the routes being ignored, what we can do on the R2 is enable the debug. Okay, so look at the SPF calculation on the debug and then we can clear IP or SPF process. Okay, you have to give it a second for it to scroll through the debug output. Okay, it looks like it's done. So let me do a you all and see if we can find a relevant output. We're just trying to find it and look for the word ignore. Or actually, we should be looking for the word tag rather. So, kind of know exactly what we need to look for. So, you can see that some of the routes, it said that the tag is equal to the VPN tag, so it's ignoring the LSA. Also, and these are specifically for the uh, external routes that we were looked at with domain tag earlier, which is 1101 and 2201. Let's see if we can find more of that for R8 loopback. I'm okay, just trying to look for. I'm not too sure that's going to show up or not. And obviously the one with the domain tag showed up and it's a matches the tag and they ignore the LSA. And let's see if we can look for specifically for 8.8. .8. Maybe that uh, for the down bit route ignore, maybe it doesn't really show up on the debug. Okay, but I think we saw the tag being ignored and I think I forgot to point that out also in the routing table. C1 OSPF. Okay, we also do not see the routes that belongs to R1 and R2 loop back 10. That is 1101 and 2201, and that's because the of the domain tag that's being detected and the route were being ignored. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the next part, which is changing the OSPF domain tag on R4, R2, and R1 to 44. In this particular order and see how our true how two is now treating uh, routes 8800 slash 24 as we make changes to these routers okay and then we're gonna have to explain why what we're gonna about to see is happening so starting with uh, router r4 so what we're gonna do now is to change the domain tag on r4 to tag 44 and see what happens Okay, we still keep this BGP session down at this point. So on R2, getting under router OSPF1 BRF C1. We do a domain question mark and see in addition to domain ID that we play around with in the previous tasks. We also have an option for a domain tag and you can pick any value within that range. For us it's 44. Now on R2, Going back and do show IP OSPF database. And since we're messing around with the domain tag, we're specifically, actually I think we might have a typo on the task right here. So this routes, it should have been a 1101 slash 32. Since we are dealing with domain tag, it doesn't make sense to look at 8800 because there's our summary LSA. So I'll fix that in the documentation. But for us to look at is the show SPF database external 1101. Okay, because 1101 is an external routes. So here you can see that it's still learning two routes that has installed in the database. One is still having the old domain tag, and that is coming from the router one. Most likely it's through the backdoor link since we still have the BGP connection shut down. And then we also have this one that came from router four. And you can see the domain tag has already changed to 44. Okay, so now on R2, if we do show IP route, VRFC1, 
OSPF, you can see how the R2 now install the Route 1101 in its IGP routing table, and that's because the domain tag on the route has received from switch one, it doesn't match the local domain tag, so that's why the route is accepted and installed in the routing table. Okay, so what we're going to try next is changing the domain tag on R2. Okay, so 1 BRFC1, domain tag 44, and we do the same show command. And now, you see before, it's being learned through FAST01, but now it has switched to FAST00. The route is still there, but now it's pointing out a totally different interface and FAST00, and that that is the interface going towards R7. Okay, and that, that's because now that we changed the main tag on R2 to 44, it's now rejecting the route coming from switch one, but instead it's taking in the route that's coming from R7 over the backdoor link. Okay, because it's the main tag of that route, it's still the O value. Okay, we can just double check that on IPOSPF, and that is the domain tag. That is different from the local domain tag, and that's why R2 is installing that route in its routing table. All right, and finally, we're going to change the domain tag on R1 as well. So router OSPF1, VRFC1, and then domain tag 44. Okay, and then going back to R2 and see what's the ramification of doing that. You can see again R2 lost that 1101 routes completely because now that route it had installed earlier is carrying a same domain tag, which is 44, as its local domain tag. Okay, and if you look at the, again, database external 1101 right here, coming from router 1, domain tag has been changed to 44. Okay, so going through the exercise, just wanted to demonstrate the behavior of the domain tag. So the concept is very similar to tagging any EIGRP routes and then build like a route map and then match that tag to have that route with the tag deny. But instead, OSPF has this default behavior that deny the route with the tag that's matching a local tag without you having to actually build the route map to deny that. So that wraps up our video on MPLS VPN PEC with OSPF. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labnews.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.